I am going to read The Midnight Mass of the Dead, a Norse folktale. From the book Short and Shivery, Thirty Chilling Tales, retold by Robert D. San Soki. There once was a very devout widow who lived in a small village in Norway and went to church every day. For many years, Juliana would go with her friend Berta to these services. When Berta died, she went alone. On Christmas Eve, she thought she would go to the early service on Christmas morning. Since there were fewer people at this Mass, she could sit near the altar, feeling close to the Christ child on this holiest of days. Before she went to bed Christmas Eve, she put out coffee so she could have something warm to drink, because she did not want to go to church on an empty stomach. Juliana's alarm failed to wake her, but she roused herself out of a deep sleep sometime Christmas morning. Moonlight was streaming through onto the bedroom floor when she got up. She looked at her little alarm clock, but it had stopped with the hands frozen at 11.30. She did not know for sure what time it was, so she went over to the window and looked down the street to the church. Light was shining through all the windows, and opening her window sash for a moment, she was sure she could hear singing carried to her ears on the chill breeze. She hastily set the coffee boiling while she dressed. She downed a cup of the strong black brew, then got out her long pink cloth coat lined and trimmed with rabbit fur, which she only wore on special occasions. Tying a white scarf around her head and gathering up her prayer book, she set out for the church. Oddly enough, it was very quiet on the street, and she did not see a soul on the way. Usually Christmas morning brought many to even the earliest services, souls who might otherwise never go to worship during the year. When she entered the church, she found a pew near the altar. But when she glanced around, it seemed to her that all the people looked pale and strange, though she was not rude enough to stare at them. The woman on her right had deep circles around her eyes as though she had just gotten over some terrible illness. The man on her left clutched the back of the pew in front of him with fingers so long and thin they hardly seemed to have any flesh on them at all. It seemed to Juliana that there wasn't anyone kneeling around her that she knew, but she had the feeling that she had met many of them before, though she could not say where or when. She settled back on the hard wooden pew along with the rest of the congregation. When the pastor left the altar and climbed half a dozen short steps up to the pulpit, he was not Pastor Solvold, nor any of the city ministers she was familiar with. The visitor was a tall, pale man who preached quite well. Again, she had the nagging feeling that she knew him from some time long ago, but she could not place him. He spoke of death and those who lay waiting the resurrection under the Christmas snows and who grew impatient with eternity. Juliana found his themes morbid, not at all the message of joy and hope she expected. The preacher rambled on, and she became restless, shifting uncomfortably in her pew. As she let her mind wander, she realized there was not the noise and coughing and throat clearing that she was used to hearing at any early mass. The silence was absolute that when she nervously dropped her prayer book, the sound seemed to boom out the altar to the choir loft. The preacher paused and stared at her with red-rimmed eyes that had no trace of kindness in them at all. Juliana picked up her prayer book, but she was feeling so uneasy that her hand was trembling. When the preacher had finished his sermon, he led the congregation in a hymn. The music was strange, and the words were unfamiliar to Juliana. Leaves have their time to fall, and flowers wither at the north wind's breath, and stars to set but all. Thou hast all seasons for thine own, O death. She was so uncomfortable that she could not get any words out. 
She was aware of the woman on her right and the man on her left staring at her with the same intensity as had the strange pastor. Suddenly, while the singing continued, a woman who was sitting behind Juliana leaned forward and whispered in her ear, Throw your coat over your shoulders and go quickly. If you're still here when the Mass is over, you're finished. This is a service held by the dead. Now the widow was so frightened, she wasn't sure her legs would support her. But she had recognized the voice of the woman who had warned her and turned around. It was Berta, her friend, who had died many years ago. In a flash, she realized that the pastor and other members of the congregation that she had recognized were persons who had died in the parish over the years. She shivered from terror, but Berta gave her shoulder a reassuring squeeze. So she pulled her coat loosely around her and got up to leave. But just as she reached the aisle, the woman with the sunken eyes and the man with the bony fingers began to screech. These ghastly figures turned in the pew and snatched at her. Like a sea that has suddenly been churned by winds, the crowd of horrible, pale churchgoers rose in their pews and began clamoring toward the aisle. They yelled and moaned and scratched at her. The hands like claws with dirt and mold beneath their cracked yellow fingernails, sobbing, no, no, no. Juliana pushed her way down the aisle. Just as she shoved her way through the doors and out onto the church steps, she felt her coat pulled from her shoulders by the creatures chasing her. Without giving it a second thought, she let them have the coat and ran down the steps into the windy street beyond. The moment she reached her own door, she heard the clock somewhere chiming one. She fumbled out her key, unlatched the door, and slammed it behind her, half dead with terror. She set about lighting every lamp and candle in her room. Then she sat on the couch, determined to keep watch through the small hours of the night. But exhausted as she was, she fell asleep. Juliana woke late in the morning. Most of the candles had burned themselves out. Only a single lamp was still burning on the mantel. Through the gray light, she heard the church summoning the faithful to Christmas church services. Had she dreamed it all? She wondered. But when she went to put on her favorite coat, she could not find it in the closet. Putting on an old black coat, she went out into the street and was greeted by her neighbors who were hurrying to mass. Yes, she told herself, it had all been a nightmare and she had simply misplaced her coat. She would find it soon enough. She had to force herself to mount the steps and enter the back of the church. For all that it was crowded with friends and neighbors, but she turned and fled when the sexton came up to her saying, I think this is yours, isn't it? I've seen you wearing it at church before. He held out to Juliana her pink cloth coat with the rabbit lining and trim that had been torn into a thousand strips. Thank you for watching.